Welcome back folks. Today I want to return to our 55 grain full metal jacket boat tail series that we got going on here. We've been shooting the uh, the Bob's bullet from uh, 223bulkbullets.com lately. These guys have been shooting pretty decent and we've been working through our, our working our way through powders trying to find ones that shoot excellent. We're still on the hunt for the perfect powder. But what we've done the last video we added in the 55 grain full metal jacket boat tail from Hornady. These can be had for a reasonable cost, especially when you buy in bulk. So been looking to put these up against one another. In the last video, we shot IMR 3031. Today's video, I want to shoot Hodgton Varget. If you watched my video about uh, case capacity in Starline Brass, you'll know that uh, this, star yeah, Starline Brass is what we're going to be using today. It's pretty darn nice brass, but it's a little bit thick and doesn't quite have the case capacity of something like Lake City or some of your other options. And this powder in particular, that presents a challenge because with Varget, you're looking at a pretty full case or the ability to load up to a pretty full case without blowing your face off. So let's, let's jump right into it and talk about load data. Two main sources. We're shooting the Hornady 55 grain, so we've got the Hornady manual. They show a max charge of 26.4 grains at an overall length of 2.2 inches. Okay. Our other source is the Hodgton website and also actually right here on the can of Varget. They've got load data for, for a uh, 55 grain spear soft point and it shows a max charge of 27.5 grains. Now the problem with 27.5 grains and Starline brass is that it well, with new brass, it was absolutely overflowing the case and I was having to uh, tap the uh, cases and settle the powder in there enough to get a bullet on there, which that's no fun. And here in the, uh, in the, the, this, the brass we're going to shoot today has been, has been fire formed, so it's got a little bit more capacity, but it's still right up there to the top and it's just more powder than it's comfortable to load with. You get spillages. I mean, God forbid you're trying to run it in a progressive. You're going to have powder all over the place. There's no reason to shoot that much powder other than to say, wow, look how much powder we shot. And that's dumb. So what we're going to do, so they said 27.5. We're going to back it down to 27.0. I was playing around with that a little bit earlier. And that is, you know, comfortably below the case mouth to where hopefully we won't be spilling powder everywhere. If you're shooting another type of brass that has, has you know, a little bit more case capacity, you might be able to squeeze that other half grain in there and I would say go for it. Shouldn't be a problem, but I want to limit it to 27 just so we don't have any problems there. And, and just like in the last video, I want to shoot half grain increments. So 27 is our max, so that makes 25 our starting charge. Should be a decent little range, cover a lot of ground, give us an idea of how these bullets are shooting with this powder over a reasonably wide velocity range. Now for overall length, the Hornady book says they shoot 2.200 with their 55 grain, but that overall length is just a little bit too short for the Bob's bullet. We go just ever so slightly past the cantaloupe. So I want to stretch it out. We'll shoot the same overall length we shot in the IMR 3031 video, which is 2.215 inches. It's a good compromise overall length for these two bullets. And for primers, we're going to shoot uh, Winchester WSR primers. Those guys. I think that's what we've been shooting. And the Hodgson data uses WSRs. And the Hornady manual uses WSRs. So why not? So another quick warning about the Starline brass. One thing I've, uh, you know, I've, I've tumbled these pieces a couple times in my wet tumbler with steel pins and I'm getting steel pins that get stuck down inside of the case. So I'm having to keep my eye open on that. These are, uh, my steel pins are from my Frankfurt Arsenal wet tumbler. They're the ones that came with it. So your pins might be a different size, might not have the problem, or maybe your Frankfurt Arsenal pins are newer, they haven't worn down as much, whatever. But just, that's something to always kind of keep, uh, keep an eye out for, is steel pins getting stuck either in flash holes, or down inside of cases, it happens occasionally. No matter what size pins you use, there's gonna be some case out there or some flash hole out there that's gonna to wanna to attract them and get them stuck. And for my pins, it happens to be this Starline brass. So keep an eye out for that. Have we covered everything? Yeah, we're shooting the Hornady, we're shooting the Bobs, 
We've covered our components. This brass has already been prepped. It's uh, clean and sized, and I've actually already put in our WSR primers, so I'm ready to start weighing powder. All right, so our seating die is still set for 77 grain match kings. So let's get this guy dialed in. It's one of the best things about a candler. It helps you get close to your target overall length quickly without measuring 1400 times. All right, that's pretty close. I'm getting between 2.216 and let's see what's our shortest guy. There's a 2.212, 2.214. I think we're good. The crimp, I'll tell you what, let's try out the crimp we used from the Mark 262 video. Yeah, that looks good. A little bit of a little bit of a squeeze down into the cantaloupe just a touch, but nothing crazy. So if you didn't watch the last video with IMR 3031, I've got a couple of other 55 grain full metal jacket boat tail bullets. You know, right now we're playing around with the Hornady, but I also have the Everglades version two, and I've got the 55 grainer from uh, RMR, uh, Rocky Mountain Reloading, I think it is. So we're gonna be testing several, several 55 grainers here in the coming weeks and months. So this is the first one with our highest charge. The, the last charge, 26.5 grains, I did start feeling just a touch of crunchiness this doesn't feel bad i'll tell you what before we crimp it i'll measure overall length and see if it's grown yeah this guy's 2.221 all right sometimes you got to watch that as you get more and more com compressed your overall length will grow and you got to chase your bullet seating die down just a touch so i'm going to go ahead and seat this whole row and we'll see how much growth we've got Yep, so our longest guy is 2.221, and our shortest is 2.217, or 2.218. Yeah, I'm going to screw it down just a touch, just a little bit. Yep, that did it. So 2.214 is our shortest guy, and I think 2.219 or 2.220 is our longest guy. Good deal. So now I just need to weigh out the charges for our Hornady bullets. And the other thing I need to do is take the Bob's bullets and take them off of the bench. Because that's what I screwed up the last time I tried to film this video. I accidentally uh, loaded all 50 with the Bob's bullet. Forgot to switch bullets midway. Sometimes you get in the zone, man. You get the tunnel vision and you forget what's going on. All right, so I've moved on to the Hornady, getting these guys seated. I'll tell you, as I was measuring out these charges and getting them in the cases, it made me think uh, about a video Mopar Madman did the other day. If you haven't seen his channel, he does a lot of 6.5 Creedmoor stuff with his Ruger Precision Rifle. And the other day he did a video on the Forster funnel that has a long drop tube. And these long drop tube funnels are supposed to help get more powder in the case. You know, like our top charge here with Varget, where we really got a, a pretty darn full case using the a funnel with a long drop tube. It just gets it in the case in a more organized manner, I guess, so that it, uh, you know, it's stuffed down in there a little bit more. I'm gonna to have to get one of those. They're, they're not expensive. He went through and did some tests with a standard funnel versus the, the long tube funnel. And it was pretty shocking the amount of difference he saw. I do have one, kind of. I've got one of these universal MTM kits that comes with a couple different funnels and different size you know, attachments that you can change it's it's not an awesome funnel it's like a ten dollar little kit but it does come with this drop tube so basically you would squeeze that in there put that guy in there and then now you've got an absurdly long funnel i didn't think about it until i was already done <laughs> so maybe in the next video or the next time we're doing heavily compressed charges with 
extruded powders, we'll give that guy a try. Or maybe I should just go ahead and get one of the Forsters or one of the other nicer ones. That's something I always, like every time I sit down at the bench, I, I always tell myself, like, man, I need to upgrade my funnel game. Because I mainly use universal ones and they're just a pain in the butt, especially with 22. It's not so bad with 30 caliber stuff or larger stuff, but with a 22, these attachments, they, you know, they go down on and they kind of stick because the fit is just, you know, a little bit too close. I don't know if that makes sense, but yeah, I need to spend a couple bucks on some nice funnels at some point in my life. So this is our second to last charge. I did hear a little bit of uh, crunchiness on that one there. Let me have a look at our overall length. 2.217, or yeah, in that range. I'll go ahead and seat, seat this whole row and see how they look. Yeah, these guys are 2.216 and 2.217. I did get one that was 2.218. So a little bit longer. So I'm going to give the die just the slightest tweak here before we do our last row. It might not have been enough. That one's 2.222. 2.220. So let's give it another, another little tweak. And we'll call that good enough. 2.218, close enough. Good enough. So that's it, folks. Three more bullets to seat, and then we've got a box of ammo. So let's get out on the range. All right, folks, it's time to get started. We are at 100 yards. Shooting at three quarter inch dots. My gun has an 18 inch white oak armament barrel and the remaining details about the setup are down in the description. We're shooting from a clean gun today. For those of you keeping track at home, my, my adjustable gas block, I've got a Wilson Combat adjustable gas block in this gun and it's been set a little bit too high. I've been over gassed for a bit and I went to adjust it today and it had completely frozen up. So I had to pull the freaking hand guard off this guy, tear that guy apart and knock the crud out of there and put it back together. So. Here on the first shots, maybe we'll have some function issues. I don't know. Regardless, it won't be related to the load or the powder. You're not going to have function issues with Varget and 55 grain bullets if you've got a standard setup. So let's get started. We are going to start with the Bob's bullets, 25.0 grains. Okay, let's switch back and forth between our two bullets to uh, hopefully spread out the effects of barrel heat on our groups. So this is 25 grains with Hornady. Okay, back to the Bob's bullet. Next up is 25.5 grains. All right, pretty crappy group so far. Back to the Hornady. 25.5 grains. Okay, back to the bobs for 26 grains. I'll tell you what, I got my gas block setting perfect. 
first try. They're ejecting right where I want them. So, all right, back to Bob's 26 grains. All right, that's a little bit of an improvement. And a good looking standard deviation number as well. All right, we're at the halfway mark. We fired 25 shots. So I'm gonna go ahead and give it a little time to cool down. I've been shooting pretty slow anyway, but it is a bit warm. It is in the 80s. So time for a break. All right, folks, break time is over. Time to get back to it. 26 grains of Argot with our Hornady bullet. All right, the groups are getting tighter. The standard deviation numbers are getting smaller. I'm liking where this is headed. Next up, 26.5 grains with the Bobbis bullet. Okay, 26.5 with the Hornady. All right, another nice group for the Hornady. Bob's has one more chance here. It's not looking good. <laughs> All right, 27 grains with the Bob's bullet. All right, disappointing finish there for the bobs. So let's uh, let's see how the Hornady does with 27. So the Hornady opened up there just a touch at the end, but still not a bad showing. Let's uh, pack up all this crap, get back to the bench. All right, so at this point, I've gotten into the habit of showing you the brass. There's nothing at all to see. So I'm not gonna worry about moving my camera. I'm feeling lazy today. There's nothing to see. Good looking brass. If we would have hit pressure signs with Varget, I would have been extremely shocked. Our velocity range, we were right at 2,800 feet per second starting off with both bullets, and we made it up to a little over 3,000. The Hornady bullet shot just a little bit faster all the way along, and yeah, about 50 feet per second more on the top end with 27 grains. Not a big deal. Once again, Hornady is definitely our winner. Although this is an interesting target and the similarities between the two bullets. The 26 and 26.5 grain loads were the two best for both bullets. Now, unfortunately, the Bob's bullet was a little over an inch, you know, 1.1 inch, 1.3 inch, and the Hornady was a 0.9 and a 0.77. So this range right here, man, that's, that's a good looking, good looking range with the Hornady. With both bullets, the standard deviations more or less kind of tightened up as we went along. This was a little bit of a 
a shock here, 26.5 with the Hornady gave us a 24.2 feet per second standard deviation. But on the whole, standard deviations seem to get better as we uh, headed towards a completely full case of powder. So Varget did okay, right? I mean, uh, yeah, Varget did okay. It look, you know, it looks to me like uh, I would probably choose 26 grains just because it would be nice and easy to remember. 26 grains plus we're not overflowing the case. You know, like we kind of are up here towards the top end, you know, you'd have more risk of spilling powder and stuff like that as you load. So 26 looks like a pretty good number. So this is twice in a row that our Hornady has shot remarkably well. And I'm so shocked by this, right? Because this is my previous experience with the Hornady 55 grain full metal jacket bow tail. This is the 500 bullet bulk pack from Midway. I bought this box of bullets back when I first bought my Colt AR, my first AR. I picked up this box of bullets thinking that these would be, uh, you know, good for plinking ammo. I've only got a handful left. There's actually 12 of them left. They shot terrible. <laughs> they shot awful. Now I haven't tried them in my white oak armament barrel. This is by far the most accurate 223 barrel I've had in an AR. So maybe these would be the same, but I think in the next video where we shoot the Hornady, I'll go ahead and load up these last 10 or 12 and see if I get the same results. Like, I don't know if there's a difference between their bulk bullets and their, you know, 100 count packages, but I'm just shocked. I'm really, really shocked. I expected, I expected them to shoot consistently worse than our Bob's bulk bullets. And that's just not what we're seeing. That's just absolutely not what we're seeing. As I think I mentioned earlier, I've got the uh, version two bullet from Everglades ammo. And I've got, I've got the ones from RMR. So I'm interested to see how they do. But I'm just shocked by, <laughs> by how well these Hornadies have been shooting for us. So the next video I'm going to do, I want to go back to 22 Nosler. I haven't even, I've got the new barrel to test in that. And I've got the other barrel back from Odin works. And I kind of need to uh, get into that, but I haven't even built the upper yet. So there probably won't be a video tomorrow. It'll probably, probably be the next day and it'll be a, a 22 Nosler video. So if you enjoy the channel, want to help support what we got going on here, come check us out at patreon.com slash reloading, and I will see you guys next time.